the degeneration up at the Tahoma Clinic. Well, isn't that an interesting thing? If my mother was still alive, I would fly her up there in a minute to see if that could, could help her. Um, I think the two forces that are working against what you're all doing and, and what I'm doing, if you've seen me on television, I get a lot of um, people taking the opposing force, but I think the two major things that are in your way and my way are the pharmaceutical companies, and I'm not anti-pharmaceutical at all. They're a godsend. When you need a pharmaceutical, you need a pharmaceutical, and I would not want to live in a world without them. But when you don't need a pharmaceutical, when you can accomplish something without a drug, why would you take a drug? Because every drug has a, a side effect, and usually every drug requires that you need another drug and another drug and another drug. So if, I think I know what the thinking is, if we all realize that it's as simple as re restoring ourselves to optimal hormonal levels in the right ratios, individualized for each person, well, we're not going to need all those drugs. And we're such a bonanza from middle age on. Think of the menopause cocktail. What does Prozac cost a month? What does Ambien cost a month? What does Valium cost a month? What does Claritin for your watery, itchy eyes? What does that cost a month? What does your anti-anxiety medicine cost a month? And so on and so on. That's just the first five. So there's a huge bonanza on us from middle age on. Well, myself, being on bioidentical hormones, I do not take one drug. Nothing. Nothing. N uh, not Nexium, not Lipitor, not anything. I take niacin instead of Lipitor. I, I um, take mastic gum instead of Nexium. I feel so good about myself taking these supplements every day. And it's a bit of a, a job, isn't it? Uh, and people who watch me, you know, with my bag of vitamins every day laugh at me and scoff and mock uh, because it is a bit of a job and it is a bit of an expense. This is where I choose to spend my money on supplements, herbs, etc. And um, I take my herbs, I take my turmeric, I know what turmeric does, the curcumin, I, I know uh, CoQ10, I know about cinnamon force, and all these things, all this building up, putting back in what is depleted out of our food supply. So it's a bit of work, okay? All right, so you have to take some vitamins in the morning. So it's a bit of work. I'm, I have very, very low uh, vitamin B. I have very, very low homocysteine. My family dies from heart attack and stroke. Well, I don't want that. So doesn't it make sense, connect the dots, that if my family uh, dies of a heart attack and stroke, which is usually low homocysteine, that if I took a vitamin B shot every day, that I could keep that homocysteine level where I want it, and it is. So, okay, it's a bit of work. I've had cancer, and I refused uh, standard of care for my cancer seven years ago. I'm seven years out. I feel so good about that. <laughs> Thank you. It's survivable. I realize you catch it early. Um, so many people, to me, die of the treatment, not of the disease. And so instead of chemotherapy, I chose to um, inject an anthroposcopic drug called Iscador. And every other day, I inject Iscador. And then I'm off for five days, and then every other day. And I will probably do that for the rest of my life. It's a little bit of work. It doesn't hurt too much. Boom. Over. Done. I um, like to complete the missing part of the song. I am on estrogen, I am on progesterone, I am on testosterone, I am on DHEA, I am on pregnenolone. I'm, I'm actually 61. 61, you kind of out of everything. So I just keep putting it back. My IGF-1 was real low, so they put me on um, HGH. I'm on 0.6 HGH. I feel great. I've got muscles, I feel good, I've got energy. And, you know, I was watching television this morning about all the athletes, and it's too bad because they set you back a little bit with uh, a lack of understanding. Now, the athletes so often abuse it. But when you need HGH and when you need testosterone replacement, and if there were some people who are running these commissions who actually did research into maybe these athletes, because of burning out their biochemicals, because of the lifestyles they lead and the over-exercising that they do, I'm sure a lot of them really do need some testosterone replacement and, or HGH replacement. Not in these super doses that they're taking, but nobody, there's a lack of understanding. You say the word anabolic steroid and everybody puts up, you know, a, a, a dagger sign. So there's all this confusion. And yet when you're 
when you're living the song, you feel so good. I'm not, I don't feel high or stoned. I just feel like I used to feel when I was in optimal health. I um, uh, cleaned out my viruses not too long ago, heparin shots. Um, that was a little bit of work, but how cool. Viruses, you know, cancer's a virus. I don't want viruses anymore. I work with a lymphatic specialist because of the radiation. It congested my lymphatic system, and so we do a lymph a lymphatic congestion massage. It's a little bit of work, but I feel good. I'm not on any drugs. So you uh, add all these things up, and people who are not buying into this kind of medicine make fun of me, but I, I have energy. I feel good. I'm thinking. My brain is working. I don't have senior moments. And I actually get irritated when people say, oops, senior moment. I think, that's a symptom. That's your body talking to you. That's your body going, help, help. I can't think anymore. I'm not getting enough estrogen up to my brain. The scratching, the itching, not enough estrogen. The bloating, not enough progesterone, or maybe too much progesterone, depending on who you are. Symptoms are your body talking. Symptoms are your body screaming. And it is so hard to crawl into a menopausal symptomatic woman's head to know how she feels. But having been there, it feels awful. You're not yourself. I remember at one point, I had this incredible marriage. I've been married for 40 years. And I had this incredible marriage, and the three years that I was without hormones, you take it out on the one you love the most. I couldn't sleep, night after night after night, sweating up, uh, going back to sleep for 15 minutes, waking up all sweaty, going back to sleep after two or three hours of being awake, sleep for 15 minutes. You know, a total of maybe three hours a night. This goes on uh, night after night, week after week, month after month, year after year. You're not in a good mood. That's why we menopausal women get that, that reputation. We are, we are uh, witches with a B. <laughs> we are difficult because we feel bad. And we don't want to be on all the drugs, but if a drug will take away your pain, you'll take it. So if I, in, through my books, can get them to you first so that you can take away their pain without a drug, think of what you've done. Think of how you've changed the course of a life. Because once someone feels like this, they never want to go back. I never would want to go back to the way I was feeling. It was interesting in New York, going through, I was in Bergdorf's, and I was doing my bit for the economy. <laughs> I was in Bergdorf, and I was in Barney's, and I'm not out amongst the public very, very much. I live a kind of a sequestered life because I stay at home a lot, and I have an organic vegetable garden, and I write my books, and I have this lovely, calm, serene life. So when I get out in a place like that, I'm kind of surprised at the reaction. But it isn't like it was when I was on Three's Company of, Oh, God, I love you, that, that fan thing. This is women, women who come up and say, can I tell you what bioidentical hormones have done for me? Can I tell you what bioidentical hormones have done for my marriage, for my family? Can I tell you what it's done for my daughter? Women are grateful. And right now, the doctors, um, unlike yourselves, who have not jumped on the fast-moving train, have really been caught unprepared. And I think a lot of what's going on also is embarrassment, that they weren't taught in medical school and haven't had time or the inclination or the knowledge to go deeper. So, so that is what's going out there in the world. The women want it. The women don't feel well. The women don't want to be cast aside and become invisible. Women don't want to get divorced and lose their families. And that's what happens when you take it out on your husband like I did on mine. At one point, my husband, who adores me, said, Suzanne, a marriage can only take so much of this. And it was a potent way that he said it. And I thought, oh my god, you're the last person I want to send away. I didn't mean to do that. So this, this passage is a difficult one for the man and the woman until she gets on this. And it's amazing that once a woman starts feeling good, then the man looks over her shoulder and says, I want some of that. Because men, I'm sorry, it takes a little longer for you, but they do movies called Grumpy Old Men for a reason. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, you know, it's terrible when you know symptoms and signs because I sit in a room and I go, uh, there's that belly starting to grow. Yeah, his insulin's out of whack. Shoulders are starting to slope. Oh, he needs testosterone. Wow, his face is kind of pasty and saggy. His thyroid's screwed up. And it's terrible. You doctors must sit there and look at this all the time. We're all sitting in a, in a restaurant looking at